Hey guys, it's Mark from Migrant Professional. In this video, we are going to be talking about five incredible causes for fortification spectra migraines. My name is Mark from Migrant Professional, and I teach brain health and brain recovery from a holistic and a functional perspective. Now, fortification spectra is part of the migraine aura. Within migraine nerves, 20 to 30% of them experience a migraine aura. Now, this migraine aura in some people comes with a visual aura. This visual aura, the actual object that you see inside of your vision is often called a fortification spectra or a scintillating scotoma. Now, we're going to be diving into what that is, what causes it, what we can do about it, um, and we're going to really go through it in a five-step system. Let's get into it. So the first thing we want to understand, the most important thing to understand is the trigger levels and the threshold level, right? Everyone, especially you, has a trigger level and a threshold level. Now, our trigger level can be easily summed up as the uh, sum total of stress in the body. The body summates stress. It summates it um, through what is called allostatic load, right? So our nervous system, it is dipping into all the different subsystems in our body, whether that be digestive system or our, um, you know, our stress system, our hormonal system, our um, detoxification system. All of these different systems are controlled by our nervous system. So our nervous system is constantly interacting with them, constantly taking a sum total and then totaling all of that up into what is called allostatic load. So this is the sum total of all stressors. So the stress that is coming from your, your job or your relationship, the stress that is coming from the off-gassing of, of uh, furniture and your clothes and the, the chemicals that you use to clean, the uh, anti-inflammatory or the inflammatory diet that you eat or don't eat, the exercise that is helping you build or breaking you down, all of these different lifestyle factors, um, known as the exposome, all of them are summated by the body into trigger level. So we always wanna make sure that we're keeping our trigger level down. We're doing things to bring down the total amount of stresses that are coming in. Now, the other one is threshold level. Now threshold level, super simple, it is our tolerance. It is our bodies and our brains tolerance to stress. So our threshold level is the amount that of stress that our body can tolerate before it just says, no, that's enough. So between our trigger level, which is all of our stresses added up, and then our threshold level, which is the amount of tolerance that our body and our brain have to stresses, we have that wiggle room. Now we always wanna make that wiggle room bigger. We always wanna bring down our stresses and help support a nice, strong, healthy threshold. We want to make sure that we are staying as far away from our threshold as possible. But if those stresses build up and if they cross our threshold, then we trigger. Then our body says, nope. And it goes into a process of um, repairing and healing and making us introspect and creating pain and doing all of these different things that we call migraine to help us to, on one side, it is to it is a primal mechanism to help us as a defense to you know protect the brain from further stimulus that might injure it. And on the other hand, it is the, um, it is all of those symptoms that make uh, life unbearable when that migraine hits. So we always wanna make sure we understand our trigger level and our threshold level, and we are working to modulate those. Then we have our hypersensitive uh, nervous system, right? So hypersensitivity is huge. Hypersensitivity is the process by which our brain uh, needs nutrients to repair. It needs nutrients to be able to function properly. And if it is not getting these, if the stress is too much on our brain, then it will start to become hypersensitive. It will start to dig grooves into itself so that it can develop patterns of coping with that stress. But the problem is that as it digs these grooves into the brain that become easier and easier to go down, it becomes easier and easier to create pain. It becomes easier and easier to trigger. So we wanna do everything we can to stop it, stop it where it is, do all of the dietary and the lifestyle and the supplemental things that we can do to heal our brain and get out 
of that, that hypersensitive state. So hypersensitivity is the first kind of place where our brain is telling us there's too much going on. We are being overstimulated by something. Something is preventing nutrients from allowing us to repair and something is creating too many stresses and creating more stress than the brain can handle, that the brain can deal with, causing it to have to become hypersensitive to increase the awareness on it even more. And so hypersensitivity turns to central sensitivity. Now, central sensitivity is where the nervous system, it becomes sensitized in a way that everything above that threshold becomes significantly more and significantly more stressful. So whereas, you know, you're below your threshold, you're not triggered, you have a piece of chocolate, okay, it's not bad. But if you are over your threshold, if you have started to become hypersensitive and your body is becoming sensitized, then that chocolate or that, you know, those um, perfumes or that uh, fluorescent lighting or whatever it may be that is aggravating the nervous system, those become exceedingly more painful and exceedingly uh, bigger stresses on the nervous system. Now, as the brain goes through this process of not having enough nutrients and having too many stresses, it gets to what is called cortical spreading depression. Now, cortical spreading depression is where it, it can be understood as a blackout. So, there is a wave of blackout inside of a portion of the brain because the brain is not producing enough energy. The neurons are not healthy enough to maintain a nice stream of energy. And then they are stimulated. They are overstimulated by some kind of stressor, by some kind of trigger, and they black out. So there is this process of blacking out and there's this process of bringing much more blood flow so that the brain can, can fix all of these things going on. Now, this is part of the brain trying to heal itself. It is um, it, because this triggers a healing reaction in the body. If we think of um, if we think of a car, and if we over rev that car, that car will um, jump um, jump uh, RPM very very quickly instead of going one thousand, two thousand, three thousand, four thousand. If we hit on the gas really, really hard, too much of a stress, then it will jump from three to 7,000. This will cause a, a big strain on the engine if it is not primed properly, right? We can also think of it like if we haven't run water through a hose for a very long time, then we run the water through the hose and we can hear that gurgling. We get that sputtering as the hose is starting to reboot itself almost, as it's starting to get the water through and it is um, sort of clearing itself out. The brain is going through a similar process called cortical spreading depression. So it's like a blackout. And this is caused by it not having the nutrients to maintain a steady flow of energy and having stressors that are a little too much to maintain that steady source of energy. Now, then we get into brain metabolism. So as our brain is going through this process, right, we are raising our trigger levels too high, our threshold is not um, well adapted to the stressors, we are going through this process of becoming hypersensitive, there are, you know, constant stressors, we're becoming chronically stressed, there is maybe something that's happening in our lives that is chronically stressing us, like mold in the house, or a stressful relationship, or a death in the family, or any of these really big um, adverse experiences, then um, our brain starts to go into this process of creating cortical spreading depression. Now, if that cortical spreading depression happens inside of the occipital region of the brain, the occipital region is responsible for vision. And if that cortical spreading depression happens in the occipital region, then we may experience a visual aura as the visual part of our brain is going through this. So we may experience that fortification spectra right? We might experience that scintillating scotoma, right? Depending on where it's happening in the brain, we may experience an aura in a different place. So we always want to be wary of what is going on, what is the affected part of the brain, and then why? Why are our trigger levels so high? And what is keeping our, um, is not allowing our brain to properly repair and cope with those stresses, which is our nutrients, 
right? We need nutrients for every single thing in the body. Our body is made of nutrients. We have to make sure that we are getting a steady supply, that we are fixing all of those different nutrients that are different to every individual. Because even between family members, we can have a 10 to 50 times difference in how we process chemicals and how we process nutrients and how we utilize uh, different nutrients. So we wanna make sure that we are um, getting a closer look on our nutrient levels That brings me to brain metabolism, which is understanding how the brain is metabolizing nutrients, right? So our brain's metabolism, it is a summation of factors, just like stress in our lives or um, our sleep or the way we eat or anything that is really going on. It is a summation of factors. There's not just one. We live in dynamic systems. It is not just linear. We can't just apply a um, a singular chemical uh, reaction and expect this dynamic system to fix itself. We want to make sure that we're addressing it in a dynamic way. So we want to make sure that we are um, addressing this equation. First thing, we have to understand that if we have too much stress, right, raising our trigger levels, and then we have not enough nutrients to help support that, to help it cope, then we have not enough stress management to help to bring down those stressors. Remember, one of the, um, the, or the biggest trigger is stress, mental and emotional stress. So we wanna make sure that we are um, properly managing our stress, that we have the tools to manage stress from a, um, a mental and emotional level, but that we are also fixing stress physiology on the physical level because when our body can stress properly, we are much more able to cope with stresses. We don't just run into this uh, fight or flight state, this fear state of anxiety um, or depression or um, you know becoming reactionary to what is going on. We are much more um, calm and cool and stable and we can deal with those stresses. Now, our foundations are the base dynamic system inputs that we have to go through every single day to function properly, just from a base level, right? So we wanna make sure that we are we are um, drinking clean, pure water, that we're getting enough of it, that we're getting half our body weight pounds in ounces of water every single day, that we are clearing our systems, that we're getting plenty of plenty of water, and that is clean and pure, not tap water, not bottled water. We're getting um, and educating ourselves on what clean, pure water is, that we are eating an anti-inflammatory diet, blood sugar stabilizing diet, an emotion balancing diet, a diet that is full of organic and wild foods that is highly nutrient dense, supporting our brain to repair, that we are making sure that we are exercising frequently, that we are bringing our body up to a point where it has to optimize itself, which happens in exercise where we are pumping lymphatic fluid, uh, we are pumping our bodies and we are creating an anabolic response that makes our body really grow um, and helps our brain grow as well that we are sleeping properly, that we are getting enough sleep, that we're getting high quality of sleep, that we're not waking throughout the night, um, that we are um, thinking properly, um, that again, that we are managing stress properly, and then that we are breathing properly so that we are taking in inspirations of breath, which is the most common um, and the most frequent uh, intake of nutrients every few seconds, um, that we are doing that properly, that it is supporting our physiology properly, um, that, and that we aren't just stuck um, you know, with tight breathing patterns, inverted breathing patterns. Um, so we have to make sure these foundations are there because these are dynamic inputs and they are foundational systems to, to healing and to functioning properly and to make sure that our brain stays healthy. Right, And then, of course, the inflammatory and the oxidative storm. Right, so when our body is um, super stressed, it is super inflamed. When it is revving itself up because it has to deal with a lot of different things, it is creating a lot of oxidants, a lot of oxida- uh, oxidative particles that can create a lot of oxidative damage. Like we know with migraines, oxidative damage is the linking factor behind all migraine triggers. Right, oxidative damage is huge. So we wanna make sure that we're buffering our body with antioxidants, that we are checking our oxidative levels, 
and that we are um, buffering those with lots of antioxidative foods. And then the inflammatory side, we wanna make sure any immune responses are dealt with, gut is huge, um, and we wanna make sure that we are properly buffering inflammation to give our body a chance because once that um, inflammatory, once those inflammatory messengers get going, they can perpetuate themselves um, just on their own without anything promoting that. So we wanna make sure that we are buffering that, we are supporting our body with lots of anti-inflammatory um, foods and that we are giving our body um, what it needs to kind of buffer this anti this inflammatory and oxidative storm. Otherwise, our brain cells suffer. Our brain cells, which are already trying to cope with um, sending messages between each other, if they are hit with lots of inflammation, if they're hit with lots of oxidative particles, if they create too many of their own oxidative particles that they don't have antioxidants to buffer them with, then we can start to run into uh, damage, damaged mitochondria, damaged cells, and then um, we're gonna have breakdowns inside of our neurons. We can have excitotoxicity. We can have all these different things like cortical spreading depression, hypersensitivity, central sensitization. All of these different things happen as our body becomes more and more depleted. So we wanna make sure with fortification spectras, with migraines, with migraine auras, that we are constantly kind of looking over, make sure we're checking ourselves and that we are getting to the root so that we are understanding where are all of those triggers coming from. Right? We know that for some people, the threshold level, that our threshold level is set by our parents and our grandparents and how they live their lives, not just their genetics, but the food quality that they ate, right? If they ate lots of uh, processed flour, processed sugar, processed um, foods, they will have a much lower um, epigenetic expression, a much lower quality of epigenetic expression, and that will be passed on to us. Right? So we wanna make sure, in some people, the, the threshold level is a big part and we wanna factor that into how our program is gonna look like, but we wanna make sure we are understanding where our triggers are coming from, the, those underlying triggers. What other symptoms are going on in your body? What else is going on? Um, where did it all begin? Where did the migraines begin? At what time did they begin in your life? Um, what else was going on in that time of your life? Were you going through a stressful period? Do your stress hormones need more support, right? Did you go to travel? Maybe you caught a gut bug. Did you have digestive issues? Um, do you have digestive issues now? We know the, the gut's nervous system and the brain's nervous system are connected, right? There's a lot of different um, factors here that we have to um, understand from more than just a base level of looking at fluorescent lighting, looking at perfumes, looking at trigger foods. We wanna look deeper. We wanna we want understand our body systems because our nervous system, remember, it dips into every system and then it takes the stress from that system and it summates it to our trigger levels. Now, I'm going to link to an article in the description um, on fortification spectrum migraines. Um, check it out in the link below and let me know in the comments. Um, do you experience a fortification spectrum migraine? Do you get it with a full migraine or do you get them without any head pain phase? Um, do you just experience the fortification spectrum by itself? Um, and what do you do for it? What have you tried for it? Let me know in the comments below. Thanks. Hey, it's Mark from MigrantProfessional.com. Thank you for watching this video. Make sure to subscribe in the bottom left corner. And if you want to learn more about migraines and headaches than you've ever known before and understand what causes them, what creates them, and what you can do about them, make sure to go to MigraineProfessional.com. Thanks.